Item number, SCP-4263, Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures SCP-4263 is to be housed in a humanoid containment chamber located at Site-36. This containment chamber is to be equipped with a Scranton Reality Anchor and kept under guard by at least two security personnel at all times. Due to the ongoing investigation of SCP-4263-B, SCP-4263 is to be made available for interview by employees of the Foundation's Ethics Committee at any time it is required. Description: SCP-4263 is a Gestalt entity created through the bodily and mental fusion of 22-year-old reality bender Anna Kaufman, the previous SCP-4263, and 52-year-old site director Lucius Danton. These components will hereafter be referred to as SCP-4263-A and SCP-4263-B. The physical form of SCP-4263 is variable, with limb configurations and features shifting into various forms simultaneously resembling both components' original bodies. The personality of SCP-4263 is similarly variable, with the component in control of the main body often changing from moment to moment, and often becoming unstable. These personality shifts, while occurring naturally, can also be triggered by bright lights, loud noises, and strong emotions on the part of one of the SCP-4263 components. In addition to its shifting bodily and mental forms, SCP-4263 retains the reality-bending properties that SCP-4263-A possessed prior to the fusion, namely, the ability to transfigure the materials of objects that enter within 5 meters of it. Following the fusion, SCP-4263 mainly uses this ability in an attempt to transform personnel who approach it into statues of various materials, resulting in their deaths. However, the two components of SCP-4263 now operate as something of a self-regulating system. Any changes to reality one component makes will invariably be reverted by the other component seconds later, presumably out of spite. SCP-4263 was formed as a result of SCP-4263-B attempting to forcefully merge with SCP-4263-A in order to gain the necessary combat ability to escape justice during Operation Black Dove. See Addendum 4263-1. It is presumed that SCP-4263's current unstable nature is a result of this process being interrupted. Interview 4263-1 Begin Log Dr. Santana enters the interview room. SCP-4263 is on the other side of the observation glass, twitching and shifting between forms. Hello, SCP-4263. May I ask who I'm speaking to right now? SCP-4263 slams its body into the glass and growls, flickering in and out of view. Do you know who the hell you're talking to? I could have your job for this. I'm gonna have your fucking life for this. What's your employee number? Where am I? Employee number! Employee number! Now! I'm going to have to ask you to calm down, SCP-4263-B. SCP-4263 begins thrashing in place. <laughs> What's happening? I don't feel so good. Shut the hell up! I'm talking! I'm talking! You gotta listen to your superior when they're talking. You'll get me the hell out of this thing right now. I'm afraid that's not possible, SCP-4263-B. It's not my name. Liar! Liar, 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 liar! <sighs> they're making you say that, aren't they? Fucking ethics committee cunts. I didn't do anything wrong, you know? Do you know how much I've given to this organization? Don't you think I deserve a little back? I could do wonders for your career, you know, kid. Do you think you can get away with this? I have friends on the O5 Council, you know. Powerful friends. They won't let you do this to me. I... Shut the hell up! Shut the hell up! I have level 4 clearance! You can't treat me like this! 
SCP-4263 resumes beating its body against the walls in glass. Dr. Santana concludes that, at the present time, a coherent interview is not possible, and leaves the chamber. End log. Addendum 4263-1 Ethics Committee Action Report From the desk of Vice Chairwoman Shaw, Ethics Committee I never enjoy having to write these reports. My doing so means that, on some level, we on the committee have failed to keep the Foundation from adhering to its principles. Had we succeeded, things wouldn't have gotten so bad. In this report, I will be detailing the series of events that led to the committee investigating Site Director Lucius Danton, along with the attack on Site 36, now referred to as Operation Black Dove. Before I can dive into these specific events, I must go into the two individuals most involved with this case. Anna Kaufman and Lucius Danton, now known as SCP-4263-A and SCP-4263-B. Mr. Danton began his work with the Foundation as an agent recruited out of the United States military, and achieved recognition following his single-man recapture of numerous anomalies during the Game Day incident. He received the Foundation star for that. It's been revoked now, of course. That only helped his career accelerate further, and following the career in the field that he built on that, he began to shift into a more managerial capacity. He wanted to be put in charge of a site of his own, of course, and at that point there was really no reason not to grant that wish. He was a proven asset with the skills and experience required, not to mention a reputation that would demand the respect of his subordinates. When directorship of Site-36 became available, he was the obvious choice. Anna Kaufman had also been with the Foundation for the majority of her life, but that was, of course, less voluntary for her. She'd been discovered as a reality bender and brought into containment when she was just eight years old, after turning the moving family car she was in into water because she needed the bathroom. Usually, reality benders are among the most difficult humanoid anomalies to keep under lock and key, but Miss Kaufman was an exception to the rule. She really was the definition of the phrase, model prisoner. Never a containment breach, never even an attempt at a containment breach. Because of her docility, she ended up getting passed around from site to site whenever space was required. Reviewing these transfers now, it's obvious we were much too lax with her. It's a miracle she never escaped, to be perfectly honest. Eventually, she ended up being transferred to Site-36, and that's when the incident began. Everything was quiet for the first few months, of course, with Site-36 sending back the reports we'd expected. That Kaufman was docile, well-behaved, one of the easiest humanoid anomalies they'd ever worked with. Then they started talking about the containment breach. On December 14th, 2015, the Scranton reality anchor covering Kaufman's cell fails, and she begins an escape attempt that ends with the deaths of three security personnel. The site manages to contain her before she runs for it, of course, using a backup anchor to lock down her reality-bending ability. Following review of the events leading up to that breach, supervisors agree that Miss Kaufman's containment procedures are not sufficient. They recommend a regimen of drugs and cognito agents to ensure Kaufman doesn't make another attempt like this again. And these new procedures are implemented. We now believe that Danton either partially or fully instigated this supposed containment breach. Begin log. <sighs> um, hello? Hello, you've reached the Ethics Committee Anonymous Helpline. Is there something you'd like to report today? Um, yes, okay. Uh, this... This is anonymous, right? Yes, it's the anonymous helpline. Fully anonymous? Yes, fully. What is it you'd like to talk about today? It's... it's about Site-36. I don't know the specifics, but there's something really bad going on here. End log. The previous log was a call from junior researcher Alan Rayleigh, who had been recently assigned to Site-36. Yes, I know we said it was anonymous. Yes, that was a lie. We find it helps people find the will to report things. Two days later, Mr. Rayleigh was killed in a containment breach at Site-36. Needless to say, we stepped up our investigation immediately. It came to light that, throughout his time at Site-36, Danton had created a culture of fear and intimidation that prevented anyone from speaking out regarding his abuses of his power as Site Director. As for the specific nature of those abuses, it would be easier to say what he didn't do. 
extorting money, exploiting anomalies for his own personal gain, making inappropriate demands of his subordinates, the list goes on. Needless to say, we have a copy of it available in the committee archives. It came to light that he'd even bribed the committee representative at Site-36 not to report any of these countless ethical violations. That employee has been dealt with now, of course. I will not go into further detail, but only say that we take our integrity very seriously indeed. The most outrageous abuse of power Danton had indulged in was his exploitation of Miss Kaufman. Using the regiment of drugs and cognito agents she'd been prescribed as a result of the fake breach he'd engineered, he'd manipulated her into using her reality-bending abilities for his own benefit. Turning paper into gold, garbage into diamonds. The kind of anomaly we'd spent years containing for the sake of humanity, now turned to making a private profit. It wasn't easy to obtain this information, and Danton inevitably realized we were close to figuring him out. We soon got word that he'd been negotiating with a known Foundation-embedded agent of the Chaos Insurgency. We like to keep these sorts around so we can watch who meets with them. At that point, we decided it was time to rectify the situation. Vote Count Vote proposed by Chairman Adongo Tajani Proposal Arrest of Site Director Lucius Danton and his collaborators via deployment of armed forces 4 36 Against 12 Abstain 3 Result Motion passes on April 13th, 2019, following a vote initiated by Chairman Tajani, Mobile Task Force Omega-1, Law's Left Hand, was deployed to Site-36 to apprehend and detain Site Director Danton, along with his collaborators among the senior staff. They met with heavy resistance. Most of the security on Site-36 were now loyal to Danton, rather than the Foundation. But the Left Hand is nothing if not efficient, and we managed to secure the site with the aid of still loyal personnel after a three hour period of conflict. The senior staff who'd gone along with Danton's abuses were brought into custody, and containment on the anomalies contained within Site 36 remained intact. And then, of course, there was Danton himself. Omega 1 found him partway through his attempt to manipulate Kaufman into merging them into one single being. I presume he intended to be in full control of the reluctant entity, and then use Kaufman's reality-bending abilities to break through our forces, escape, and defect to the insurgency. I really couldn't tell you whether it would've worked or not. I can only tell you what happened when that first flashbang went off. That bright light and loud noise. SCP-4263 Because of the greed and vice of one man, as well as our own inattentiveness, the life of an innocent young woman was ruined even more than it already was. I do not expect we will ever be able to separate Danton and Kaufman. More than likely, they will serve as a cautionary tale for the rest of their natural lives. And who really knows how long that will be. Lucius Danton was a cancer, but hardly a unique one. There are doubtless many more men and women just like him in the Foundation, waiting to spread throughout our organization and poison all that they touch. And it is our duty, as always, to pluck them from the meat and cast them away. I ask that you never forget that. The Foundation keeps the world on the right path. We keep the Foundation on the right path. Secure. Contain. Protect. Thank you guys so much for watching, and a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Special shout out to my level 4 patrons, Lesby Friends, Alexis Zagrate, Scrubversive, Everborn, and Totally Not a Femboy. And a huge thank you to my level 5 patron, Doomsday LLC Prints and Design. If you would like to see your name at the end of my videos, see my videos early, and get some other cool perks, head on over to patreon.com slash drmaxwell, link in the description. 